Hey there guys, Mike here at Roy Eclipse Productions. Um, I just thought I'd do a quick video because I've been asked a few times about my kind of setup and how I go about making my templates. Um, I'm just about to start scoring a feature film called Cutting Room, which is like a kind of uh, indie indie horror film um, that should be releasing around November. Uh, so it's all very exciting times. Um, essentially, I ran into some problems because my old Mac Pro, I've got a 2010 Mac Pro. Uh, while it's a powerful system, it just was getting a little slow uh, and I was running into some problems running just the amount of libraries I need for a feature. I didn't kind of want to have to keep having different sessions uh, running all the time, like having, you know, the first half of the film in one session, then bouncing it, then the second session bouncing it, third session bouncing it, and then kind of compiling it in a in a master session. So I chose to buy a Mac Mini, uh, the top-end Mac Mini uh, that you can get from Apple, um, and basically run Vienna Ensemble Pro. So my kind of really intensive libraries, your East West Hollywood strings, um, things like that really, uh, pianos, like the Quantum Leap pianos are very intensive on your system. And anything kind of, uh, loads of kind of like uh, convolution reverbs that are, that are sort of um, really taxing on your system, very kind of resource intensive that work in kind of a linear, real time uh, kind of processing. They run on the Mac Mini. So, um, basically, on the Macs, you can just scroll. So, if you're, this is the Mac Mini here we're looking at now, uh, whereas this is the whereas the other screen is obviously the the Mac Pro where I, where my sequencer runs. So, if you're in full screen uh, view, you can just swipe left and right with the Apple mouse to go between the two computers, which is incredibly useful because a lot of kind of changing your uh, instruments and things like that, um, adjusting dynamics or anything like that, you're gonna you're gonna need to get to the, your samplers essentially, which are running here. Um, so it's just through screen sharing. The only thing that's actually plugged into the Mac Mini is the power cable and an Ethernet connection and a couple of external hard drives with the sample libraries on. So effectively, you are um, you are basically um, splitting your sample libraries between your two machines, so you can run way more samples than, uh, than previously before. So let me just quickly open up a session here. Um, I'm going to go with let's open a cutting room session um, projects. What are we looking at now? Music, cutting room. Let's do it. So this will give you like a, I'm working on some opening themes. So we can open. I work in Pro Tools, as you know. So we open up Pro Tools. Now, this is going to be loading um, essentially the sample libraries that are running on the Mac here, but it's also in the background going to be run lo launching the samples in on the Mac Mini. So if I once this loads up, if I jump to the Mac Mini. Oh yeah, this is the only thing it will ask you for your password when it's jumping between the, the two computers. Um, if we go here, it's already started to open the pianos for me. Um, it started to open Scary, which is like a whole a whole kind of bunch of patches that I'm using for the film. It's doing this without me having to kind of touch anything, you know. And once the session actually loads, it does take a little bit of time, um, but nowhere near what it would have taken if you were just running on on one computer. So the session's opening up now. Um, Essentially, I've got a whole bunch of stuff running here. So drones are going through VE Pro, which is connected. This is the scary patch, which you saw here. Um, pianos are loading in now without me having to touch anything. Um, so if I if I essentially go to... Let's take like a Dark Moan, which I believe is a... Yeah, it's a hybrid 2 patch. This is playing um, from the other computer. So if we keep playing on the keyboard, jump to the other computer... Dark Moan, which is here, the keys are coming in, and it's it's bringing in my it's bringing in my my kind of plays, um, the key presses from the other computer, and going back through LAN. Um, mob wheel works, pitching things like that. You get all your MIDI controls. There's no problem with it um, at all, and you can actually play your session from here. It'll play on the other computer. So this is what I've got recorded in um, for the for the actual you know for the for the opening of the film. Um, so it's kind of, um, it's incredibly useful. I can't recommend it enough, you know. Obviously, you know, at Macs are expensive or computers are expensive. And if you don't want to kind of keep um, upgrading your main computer, this is a way to go. You know, every time you get a little bit of spare cash after, say, after a year, just buy another Mac Mini. You get kind of uh, four licenses with VE Pro. Uh, so you can use four computers and you can, you can buy more licenses. So... The setup's very simple. You just basically make a um, let's get rid of this. You just make an instrument track. Um, you'll pop on your instance of VE Pro. 
Um, and then you can make your kind of uh, MIDI tracks which feed into VE Pro. So for instance here we've got um, uh, VE Pro instance 1, channel 1. This is going to be channel 2. And so on and so forth all the way up to 16. You then just map them here. So if we go to the mixer, you know, um, here's my contact 1. Uh, which is which is running my instances of, of uh, hybrid 2 and I've just mapped MIDI channel 1, MIDI channel 2 so if I go back and we choose this we're now using a discomfort patch which is on MIDI, MIDI channel 2 as opposed to the dark moan which is on 1 um, so it's it's a it's incredibly useful uh, thing to do, especially for those big patches that are take you know quantum leap, quantum leap pianos. I love it, but it's huge. You know, 300 gigs of samples. I mean, it's still loading. It's still loading here. You know, and we're on a hybrid drive. We're on a hybrid drive on this computer. Um, so pianos, for instance, just they're a little bit down further. The the sound iron stuff's going to have already been loaded. Um, Sorry, yeah. Um, so that's already loaded. Where we're still we're still waiting for the Becksteins to come in. Oh no, the Becksteins are in. Maybe we're loading the Steinways or something. Something's still loading. Oh no, it's, it's loaded up. Cool. So um, the, my point being, if we didn't be, if we weren't using VE Pro, we'd be still sitting here in Pro Tools waiting for those pianos to load. It takes up so much time, you know. Um, instead, I managed to get my session in. I could start working on a part of my track, and I didn't have to sort of uh, wait around for that to come in, you know. These these parts here, they're just playing back from the piano's patch. So it, it's a really really useful th useful thing to do. Um, and all you're doing, I mean, if we if we did a new instance, let's say come back to Pro Tools, jump in, we're gonna choose. Let's just go for it. Let's go for a new track. So let's go new. We're gonna create one stereo. Uh, we're gonna go instrument track. We're going to add an instance of VE Pro, so we go VSL, Vienna Ensemble Pro. Now we're going to basically connect. It's going to find an available instance, so this is my computer, this is the, the Workhorse 1 I call it, 64-bit. Uh, it's, it's, it's an available instance we're going to connect to, so we'll connect. Now we're connected to it, it's unpreserved too, so if I come into, into my other computer now, we'll open up the, uh, the, uh, the Vienna Ensemble. You can close these down as well, they actually they are still running. Um, here's the new, this is the new instance that I just created, so it's automatically found it for me uh, in the window. Now I can go ahead and add, say, a plug-in, let's go for, say, let's go for East-West, let's go for Play. Yes, it takes a little bit of time to load Play, as some of us know, but the samples are amazing, I, I do still use a lot of Play stuff. Um, okay, so we're in, we can see the sampler. Let's jump to browser. Let's load, say, Hollywood strings. Um, let's load like a just a long. Let's load. Let's go for it. Let's load a powerful patch. Let's go for this one, right? So this process is loading. I don't want to have to sit and look at this anymore. I'm just going to jump straight back to my session now. This isn't going to work yet because obviously it's still loading. But essentially, you can move on. You know that patch is loading. You can come back up and take a look at your MIDI. Well, what have we got here? You know what? Or key whim. I'm open this for a while. Okay, you know, hey, cool. Okay, fine. So, while you're kind of waiting for it to kick in, you're you're, you're free in, in terms of your your computer usage, which to me is really useful. Um, and this patch, of course, if I save the session, these this patch is going to open again when I come back to my session. I'm not going to have to load it again. So it means that if you create kind of lots of different templates, like say for a horror template, a thriller template, things like that, your general sounds you like as a composer that you go to are available to you straight away. Now we're loaded, we can go for it. You know, um, you can change all your... We, we, we've got... Um, we've got the mob wheel moving. So it's... You know, you can change your reverb. We're on the other computer. Lovely. What I would say, if you've got things like uh, I run Time Machine on my main sequencer, it goes to a NAS drive which sits on my LAN. That will cause you no end of grief. You want to try and minimise your LAN activity because you've got to remember you're sending MIDI from your sequencer here over to this computer into Vienna Ensemble which is then sending the audio back through Ethernet, through the LAN. 
So you need to have a gigabit Ethernet uh, uh, a connection, connection. Get yourself a decent router. I'm, I'm running a Cisco router. Um, I, I think I spent about £100 on it. I really went for it to make sure that it's good. Um, and try and minimise what's happening in your network. You know, if you're in a, if you're in a house... For instance, say your studio's in a house, that's fine, mine is, it's no problem. But, you know, try and sort of alleviate, if you've got housemates or you've got a family or wherever your situation is, try and create your own network. So get yourself like a Apple, a, a, a Apple um, Airport Extreme or something like that, where you can create your own network that only your computers are kind of a, a linked to. It's going to stop things inter interfering with your network, essentially. But, I mean, I've been very, very impressed with this. Um, it's, it's, it's helped me a lot. You do get that sometimes if you haven't played a key. Uh, for a while, it will take a bit of time to, for the patch to kick in. So, say if we go back to an East West piano, you know, it's just a bit bit choppy, but then it, it comes back. It's fine, you know. Oh, so yeah, um, that's kind of a very short introduction um, to kind of. Um, uh, Vienna Ensemble. I mean, it, it, I think it really is great. Any questions you've got at all, just let me know. I may do a more in-depth one in the future, um, showing you from scratch the setup. But I wanted to just get this out there in terms of, you know, this works well. You know, if you want a lot of power, you don't want to keep having to kind of bounce all your stuff to sub buses, save them out. I personally hate doing that. I want access to everything on the fly. I don't want to have to bounce in place uh, or anything like that. This will work with Logic, it will work with Pro Tools, Cubase, whatever you're using. And the kind of beauty of it is, is um, I operate in an Apple environment, um, but you can add a PC. So if there's like a plugin that you've got on your PC that you love, and you want to use it on your Mac, this is your solution. You just run the run VE Pro on your Mac, where your sequencer is, open up an instance on your Windows PC, and then you can use that plugin. So it's so powerful in that respect. Um, you can run it in 32-bit mo uh, mode and 64-bit mode. So if you've got other plugins that aren't 64-bit friendly, just launch an instance of a 32-bit um, uh, instance of VE Pro, put your plugin on, and you'll be able to use it in this session. Um, I suppose the only problem I've found is uh, remembering where things are. Yeah. You know, if you've come to a session, is it on that computer? Is it on this computer? And it can be a bit jarring having to keep jumping back to, to you know to the other machine to change your your uh, you, 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 things within your sequences, but to be fair, you know, you'll get used to it. Um, it's just it's just remembering where things are. Uh, that's the main thing. Okay, guys. Well, um, I hope this has been useful. Uh, I know it's a bit short, sort of short and concise, but um, let me know. Leave some comments uh, if possible, um, and I'll try to get back to you with it and help you out. Um, and yeah, look, for, you know, Lester. I hope you look forward to cutting room. Um, I'll put little things up there. I'm just getting started. Really excited. Um, let me know, and I'll see you soon. Cool. Take care.